The coffee sector plays a significant role in the growth of the country's economy. The crop is a major foreign exchange earner for Kenya. As part of the government's strategy to revitalize agricultural production, the Coffee Research Foundation has put in place various interventions for the well-being of the sector. Good agricultural practices, good manufacturing practices, and good hygiene practices are all essential for the realization of high-quality coffee yields. From planting to the harvesting stage, coffee farmers have to contend with several challenges. One such challenge is posed by insect pests. There are over 800,000 insect pests that are known to attack various crops in the world. Of these, close to 1,000 insect pest species attack the coffee crop. In Kenya, about 35 insect pests infest coffee. They include Antesia bug, green skills, thrips, giant looper, berry moth, leaf miner, white borer, yellow-headed borer and coffee berry borer among others. To minimize the damage caused by these pests, regular pest scouting is essential in order to determine the pests present and whether these pests have attained the economic injury level. What do we mean by economic injury level? So it is a pesty population beyond which at a certain point if it exceeds a certain level you will find that that level you will need intervention of a chemical spray so it is that point beyond which if it exceeds the cost of a insecticide control in the management of coffee insect pests one of the factors that is very crucial to the farmer is what we call scouting and what do we mean by scouting? When we talk about scouting, it means you do a survey. Probably we prefer a farmer do it on a monthly basis. So you should be in a position to have a record of your pest status on a monthly basis. This will help you to know the trend so that you are able to capture any incidents in advance before it causes a lot of damage to the coffee. Let us examine closely how to identify and manage these pests. The Antesia bug has a shield-like shape. It is generally dark brown with orange and white patches. Its damage includes the rotting of coffee beans, causing the characteristic zebra strips on parchment. It also causes multiple branching on shoots. A combination of cultural, biological and chemical spray measures are necessary for the control of Antesia bug. Timely pruning, handling and desaccharine as well as the biological use of natural enemies such as Antesia egg parasitoids comes in handy. You will find Antesia bug prefers a dense foliage. That is where it prefers most. So, the first point in the management of Antesia bugs is the cultural management and when we talk about the cultural management here we are talking about opening the tree canopy so that it is not very dense like you can see this one so this way you will be able to minimize the untested bugs so that is the cultural aspect in the management of the untested bugs there is another method that we call biological control and that is whereby you find we have got good insects in the coffee environment. Those good insects, we call them natural enemies. What the natural enemies do is that they go looking for the eggs of Antestia. Once they trace the eggs of Antestia, they will insert their eggs inside the eggs of Antestia. So at the end of the day, you will find you don't have Antestia emerging from that egg. So what will emerge from that egg is a good insect. So that way it is the biological control. And the, one of the emphasis why we talk about scouting is that we don't just spray chemicals anyhow. It has to be justified. So if you tend to be spraying chemicals regularly without any justification, then you will find you will kill those 
beneficial or good insects which are in the coffee environment. A chemical spray with the recommended insecticides when two bugs per tree are observed in the east of the Rift Valley and one bug per tree in the west of the Rift Valley helps to control the Antesia bug. Antesia bugs is a bug that a farmer can be able to see. So, in case you don't have the, the sheets which are spread on the ground so that you are able to determine the population of Antestia, in this case what you can do, you can take about 5 to 10 trees. So within those 10 or 5 to 10 trees, you spend a lot of time and you go around the whole of that tree, count as much as many Antestias as you can. Count until you are assured that I have exhausted. So probably you may count one and test here, then it shift to another point. So in this case, the best thing is to get a tin. You, if you get one, put it there, count, count, count. You get five in tree number one, six in tree number seven, like that, like that. So at the end of the day, the total, then you will divide by the number of trees. That way, the, it will be able to give you an average population in your farm. So from that point, you will be able now to base whether to spray or not. The green scales appear as flat, oval, green immobile insects along the main leaf veins and near the tips of green shoots. Upper surfaces of leaves may have spots of sticky transparent honeydew or covered with sooty molds growing on the honeydew. Black ants are normally seen climbing the trees in an effort to partake of the honey thereof. The scales feed on the plant sap while the sooty mold reduces the photosynthetic activities on the leaves thus reducing production and quality of coffee beans. To manage green scales, it is recommended that unwanted suckers be cut off and banding of the tree stump with the recommended insecticides to keep off attendant ants and allow ladybirds to clear the infestation be done. The band, which may be painted or sprayed, should be at least 15 centimeters wide. Any drooping primaries, which may act as bridges for attendant ants, should also be cut off. Before applying the band, the stem should be polished to remove the old dead bark. When now it comes to the management of green skills and Kenya mirrorbugs, the recommended method is to do what we call banding. And banding is whereby you paint from the ground level to about six inches of the stem. During banding, what you only need to do is uh, to use some recommended chemicals, that is for example, dustburn, at the rate of uh, 700 ml in 20 liters. You can also use desis at the rate of 750 in 20 ml of water, and also ethion at the rate of 1,000 ml, which is one liter in 20 liters of water. And why you are doing the banding is because you are trying to avoid uh, things we call the ants. Those ants have got a good relationship with what we call the green scales and the Kenya mealybugs. The Kenya mealybugs and the green scales produces excretors. The excretor, which is produced by those uh, two pests, is very sugary and it is preferred by the ants. So the only problem with the ants is that they have an indirect problem to the farmer. What they do is that to the farmer, as I talked about good insects, the Kenya mirrorbugs and the green scales are naturally controlled by good insects we call the ladybirds. The only problem with the ants is that when they go up the tree, they go and chase away the ladybirds. So at the end of the day, you will find that there are no ladybirds controlling the green scales as well as the Kenya mealybugs. Thrips normally attack the underside of leaves, berries and green shoots, causing grey or silvery patches covered by small black spots. Leaves may fall following a heavy infestation. The application of mulch is recommended for the control of thrips. Other measures include chemical sprays if at least one to two thrips per leaf are observed during the drought or two to three during the rain using the recommended insecticides. Mm -hmm. 
These are caterpillars that move with a characteristic looping motion. They feed on leaves making holes through the leaves or leave jagged leaf margins. Predators such as Macrorhaphis helps to put the pests in check. In addition, a chemical spray is recommended when over 10 caterpillars for trees carrying a crop or has suckers needed for change of cycle are detected. When the trees have no crop or have no suckers needed for change of cycle, spraying can be done when 20 are observed. The berry moth larva is a reddish caterpillar about 13 mm long when fully grown which attacks berries. Symptoms of attack include berry clusters in which berries are webbed together and one or more is brown, dry and hollow. If the caterpillars hatches out in the vicinity of very young berries, it grazes them but is normally too large to get into them. Naturally occurring parasitic wasps help to control the berry moth. Further cultural interventions like the stripping and burning or burying of clusters of damaged coffee berries is recommended. The farmer is also advised to monitor the pest attack during the early stages of berry development and to initiate chemical sprays with a recommended insecticide if birds or young berries are being infested. The leaf miner adults are small moths 3 to 4 mm long. Their larva causes brown irregular blotches on the upper side of the leaves. The mined leaves are usually shed off prematurely. The leaf miner is mainly controlled by natural enemies. A chemical spray after visual counting of 35 or more moths per tree is recommended. The white borer beetles are approximately 32 mm long. They are greyish with a dark head and thorax. It is their larval stage that causes damage resulting in yellowing of foliage and eventual death of trees. Wood shavings extruded by the larva from the burrows in the back or from the roots just below the soil level are diagnostic. This is the adult stage of the, the white borer. So it is the adult that lays the egg on the back of the tree. Once the, the adult lays that egg on the back of the tree, it will produce a larva, a larva which is at this, not at this stage, a very minute larva. So the larva you see here is more or less advanced. Once the larva gets, emerges, it will start feeding on the back, okay? On the back of the tree. And the, when the back, during the eating of the back, it will produce wood shavings like this. So these are the damage symptoms of the white borer. So in this case, you find the white borer, the larva is the one which destroys the coffee. So it feeds like this, like this, for a period of about six to eight months. So after it feeds like this for six to eight months, then it will get inside the tree, okay, inside the stump. So you will find this is the entry hole. So once it enters there, then again within the, 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 the it will go to the pupa stage. At the pupa stage, there is no feeding. So it is awaiting to be an adult. So after it stays inside here, pupating, for about another three or four months, then it will emerge like an adult. So the adult is the one which will emerge through this circular hole. A point of note to the farmers is that you will notice there are two types of holes. There is this hole which is look like it is oblique. Then there is this one which is circular. So this oblique one is the entry, is where the lava entered. So the circular one here is what we call the exit hole. The number of uh, infestation that can occur in a tree is not limited. Like and you can see here, there is this hole, okay? There is this hole, there is this hole, okay? Or if you don't, the entry ones, then you can also count there is this one, there is another one on this side, then there is another one on this side, there is another one. So they were more, in fact, here there were more than five. Banding of the stem with the recommended chemical is critical for the control of the white borers, especially when the infestation is severe. 
The band can be applied by painting or spraying the stem to a height of 36 inches from the ground just before the onset of rains. The treatment should be repeated after one year and every two years thereafter. If the infestation is detected early, mechanical use of wire to pierce the lava inside the stem is also a good intervention. During the scouting, anytime you notice that you have those damaged symptoms of the white borer, the first point is to trace the lava from the back. You trace the lava from the back using a wire or a knife. You will be able to trace that lava on the back before it enters the main stem. At that point, all what you need to do is to kill that lava mechanically. You can just use your hand or the object that you are using to just crush that pest. The other method of managing this pest is through application of an insecticide. And when we are applying this insecticide, the term that we use is insecticide banding. And to band is to apply that chemical. You can use a brush or you can also use a palm to spray or to brush from the ground level to 36 inches. And how you do it uh, is that uh, before probably you do the banding, it's always good to scrap the back, the peeling back, so that once you apply the chemical, it will stick to that uh, stem uh, for quite some time. And uh, during banding, what you only need to do is uh, to use some recommended chemicals that is, for example, dustban at the rate of 700 ml in 20 liters. You can also use desis at the rate of 750 in 20 ml of water. And also ethion at the rate of 1,000 ml, which is 1 liter in 20 liters of water. One fire point that I would like to emphasize as far as the management of the white borer is concerned, is you will find that uh, the infestation may be very minimal. So at this point, I would advise the farmer to burn the trees that are only affected. So when now it comes to a very severe infestation, at that point, it is recommended that the farmer should do the burning for the whole farm. When you burn, what you are doing is you are applying a chemical. So, occasionally if a lava that has hatched from a stem or from the back of a tree and you have burned it, once it is feeding on that back, it will, uh, once it is feeding on the back, it will ingest or it will swallow alongside with the chemical that is applied on the back. And you find those chemicals are toxic. So at the end of the day, the lava will die as a result of ingesting the wood, the bark that is eaten alongside with the chemical. The other way it kills the pest is when the adult is emerging from the hole and you have uh, already banded that bark. Once it is eaten, as it is getting out of the main stem, it will come across that insecticide. Again, the adult will ingest the alongside with the bark. So that is another mode of killing that pest. So that way you are able to minimize the incidences of the white borer. The adults will always emerge, mainly just before or during the rains. So that is why we always recommend to the farmer to do that banding just before the rains. The yellow-headed borer is yet another threat to the coffee crop. The adult beetle is about 2.5 cm long with black antennae. The body is generally brown in color with a yellow to orange head and thorax. It is the larva stage that causes the damage. When we talk about the yellow-headed borer, you find it starts its life cycle at the tip of the branch. This is where it lays its egg. Once it lays the egg, the young one which will hatch will start moving along the branch heading to the main stem. And as you can see, this is uh, the signs of the, the yellow-headed borer uh, attack. Upon hatching, the lava boils into a green shoot causing it to wilt. Later it burrows down the primary towards the main stem making flute-like series of holes 
and producing sawdust-like frass. Burrowing continues right down the main stem. To control the pest, cut off the wilted primaries and burn them. If the pest has gotten into the main stem, enlarge the lowest hole and use a wire to pierce the lava inside the stem. Alternatively, squirt some diluted recommended insecticide into the last hole using a syringe. Parasitic wasps help to eliminate the pest too. If you see a wilton point, one of the problem could be a yellow-headed borer infestation. So, actually, whenever people are doing pruning, anything that is wilton should be cut off like that, if it is wilton. If this is the last hole, you just cut here. Check. Have I cut it? If you have not, then continue. Maybe it, the last hole was here, but it has gone a bit further. So you keep on cutting. So occasionally farmers are concerned. If I cut that branch, if it falls on the ground, would that insect get out and infest the, the plant? But once you cut, let me assure you that it will be the end of that insect. At the main stem level, what you just do is you get the last hole. We assume it is this one. So you just pierce that lava within here. To be assured that you have killed the, the pest, you will find some yellow fluid on your wire. And that will mean you have killed that insect using a wire. That is mechanically. Occasionally, you will find a branch may be carrying a crop. So you require this crop. So because you need this crop, this pest has moved from this point up to this point. So you want to save this crop, so you don't come here cutting with a sakatua. So get a syringe like this, get the last hole, maybe uplift the branch so that it is slanting like this, then you squat some chemical, okay? That chemical should be diluted at the rate of 1 is to 100. And we have chemicals that we use like dustban, desis, and ethion. The coffee berry borer adult is approximately 2.5 mm long. The larvae feed by tunneling the tissues of the beans causing a distinctive blue-green staining. Small holes can also be seen on the berries. To control the pest, a combination of several measures is necessary. The cultural interventions include removing heavy shade, proper pruning, regular picking, stripping the old crop before the main flowering and collecting dried infested berries from the ground and burning or burying them deeply. If properly done, these cultural measures controls the pest. In case the infestation in a previous season was too severe, a chemical spray to supplement the above measures can be done and timed after the main picking up to the milky stage of bean development. This should be repeated after three weeks. Capsid bug adult is green in color and is approximately 6 mm long. It inserts its eggs completely into flower buds. The flower buds darken due to the death of the stamens and later the petals. The stamens, however, remains healthy and usually elongates, resulting in club-like black heads, which does not form fruits. The nymphs are attacked by internal parasites, which keeps their population in check. Chemical control can be undertaken if the pest population level of four bugs per tree is observed when flower buds are present. If you do a test and you find you have uh, counted four and above capsids per tree, that time you have to engage chemical application so that you minimize the capsid infestations. The star scales appear as numerous yellow, red or brownish objects in bark crevices. The green branches sharply elbows at the nodes. Affected nodes usually bear drooping dead leaves. To manage the pest, prune the infested trees severely and strip off most of the crop. Where the attack is due to the road dust, plant live dust barriers or treat the road with old engine oil if it is a short section. Naturally. The pest is attacked by ladybird beetles, their larvae, and other predators. In case of heavy infestation, 
They can be controlled by painting the brown bark with recommended chemicals such as tar oil or marshal while allowing much of it to soak into the crevices. A hot day during the rains or soon after the rains should be chosen for this exercise. Leaves and green bark should be avoided to avoid scorching. High quality crop yields are the product of good coffee husbandry. Farmers are strongly advised to minimize the use of insecticides and adopt the integrated pest management which combines the use of cultural, biological and mechanical methods with the chemical control. That way, high profit margins will be guaranteed. Enjoy your coffee farming.